I don't know about you guys, but it, it just feels like it's never been tougher to be an eBay reseller than right now. I've just seen so many increases in postage costs. I've seen price rises in thrift stores. I've got the mortgage that's continually seeing interest rates rising. It's, it's the postage one though, the Australia Post increasing on July 3 by up to 10%. That one hurts a lot. That's an extra three to $4,000 that I've got to find this year if we do the same volume of sales. I do about thirty to $40,000 worth of postage costs every single year. That one has really sat with me for the last few weeks and I just thought I'd put this video out today to at least let you guys in on how I'm feeling. It's just trying to manage the cash flow to be able to pay all of these increase in expenses, let alone the mortgage with obviously the, uh, the interest rates continually rising there as well. So it's definitely tricky. I will say that I'm, I'm surviving. I'm not quitting. This isn't a see you later sort of a video. Uh, it's more just to let you in on the fact that I'm, I'm definitely, definitely stressing about that side of things at the minute. Um, hopefully we can continue to list up a bunch of items that we're going to hopefully find out there in the thrift stores later in this video. Uh, and we can uh, obviously show you some sold items that have sold in this video as well. And, uh, try and just keep things ticking along. We've obviously got a USA trip that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's actually a very, very important trip for the growth of this eBay business. Hopefully we can make some great videos and find a bunch of great items out in thrift stores while we're over there. So we need to put ourselves in a really strong position to be able to kind of enjoy the time over there while keeping the eBay business moving smoothly as well. So I'm gonna let you in on that plan of attack in this video today. So it's gonna be a big video. Let's kick it off with a few items that have sold overnight. Okay, we had one pair of shoes sell last night and that was these ones right here, which are the uh, Adidas Gazelles. So we're running a bit of a special at the moment on all of our shoes, 15% off at the minute. Uh, so these came down to a $55 sale price and uh, postage now with the Australia Post going up is, is about a $10 postage rate. So $45 sale price after post, take off some fees, take off our initial uh, purchase price. It's gonna make us about 20 bucks. So hopefully with that 15% off sale, we can move a few more of these shoes that we've got here to try and sell. But this one is a very good one, the Gazelles. I've sold them a number of times. Trying to be really careful with all of these DVDs that we've got down here. Courtney's been working through them every day for the last couple of days. Um, we've had two Funko Pops sell, guys. It was these ones here. We've got the Green Hornet and we've got Kato. Now these have sold as a pair uh, and they also sold internationally off to the USA. So we've got a $25 postage rate or it might've only been $20 postage, um, but a $27 sale price. So I'm buying these for no more than five to $7 each. Uh, so be able to turn it around for 27. Uh, is pretty decent. But look, they don't make you a lot of money. We've got a few tubs here. There's about six tubs of Funko Pops all up. And uh, every so often, well, not every so often, every single week, we're pretty much getting Funko sales, hey? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm just going to continue to buy them for around that sort of 5 to $7 each until the sales dry up. Now we had four different DVD sales. Um, so we're listing up a lot of DVDs, as you can see here by this crazy room of allocation. And no wonder over the last 24 hours, overnight sales, we've had a large majority be the DVDs. So I wanna take you through a few. We had some good box sets sell. The first one here is this random allocation of different UFCs. Um, there's sort of UFC 103 through to about UFC 160 there, just a random mixed bundle. Uh, but we've got a $50 sale price. There were a fair few brand new seals in there as well. Um, so somebody's got themselves a pretty good deal there, I think, uh, considering there's 21 DVDs, they're paying basically you know, $2.50 each. Uh, this one here as well, just another thing that I talk about on this channel quite a lot, the BBC collection. This is a classic drama collection that I picked up in a bulk buy. Um, not sure how many there are there. Not sure even if it's complete or not. We just listed it up as is and we got a $50 sale price on that one there too. Um, this one didn't hang around for too long at all. We have got, I think it's three, four seasons, it looks like. Four seasons of American Chopper, Senior versus Junior. We've got a $65 sale price for that one there, guys. And six DVDs, we can put that one into a medium satchel with a bunch of bubble wrap, uh, and that'll get shipped off um, yeah, pretty well. Shouldn't be any issues with that. For 65, that's excellent. Uh, and then just a cheap one here, Judge Dread. Uh, we've got a $10 sale price on that one there. I'm still doing all my envelopes as tracked with the medium tracked post envelope. So that means this one's gonna net out to almost a nil result. Uh, I've probably got to get into the stamps and the uh, C5 envelopes that I think you use, Courtney. Yeah. Um, they seem to work a little bit better from a sense of profit. Um, but for, for now, we're still doing the tracked. So that one's gonna be basically a, a no result, but still made up for it with all the other ones. All right, Matt saved the best one from overnight for me, which is this Pokemon Black version Nintendo DS game. We got 110 um, 
sold price for it and we were umming and ahhing on how to ship it but I said it has to go into a small satchel with a lot of bubble wrap to protect it because it's a expensive game instead of the envelope so yeah that's up well done <laughs> I do get a lot of questions about how to ship DVDs off and uh, I think this is a pretty good example here. I mean, we are using these medium tracked post envelopes to send off the judge dreads that I just showed you then. But then when you've got more than about six or seven that would normally fit into a medium satchel, uh, I go ahead and put them into a cardboard box. There will be some bubble wrap that Courtney will use to kind of fill that in, um, but we always go ahead and do that. And you can see here, there'll be some butcher's paper uh, that we put in around this as well to send off these DVDs. But um, these American choppers, as you can see there, six DVDs, that'll fit perfectly into a medium satchel. So just thought I'd let you guys in on that. That's how we go about sending off all of our DVDs, no matter the quantity. And then while I'm at it as well, it's just these two tools that Courtney uses as well. So she'll use her table scales to just weigh the item. When it's a box like this, you do need to table scale weigh it. Um, so having a kitchen scale, I think they're only like $10 to $15 from your dollar store. A very cheap item, but definitely a necessity. And then just a tape measure to measure it up. And we're using the Australia Post My Business Plan. All of the eBay orders get imported into the computer from an Australia Post perspective. And then we can do these things to finalize what the postage rates will be. Um, you do this for long enough, Courtney and I have got a pretty good understanding of what these postage costs will work out to, um, but that's sort of how we go about the payment um, of those. And then the only other one as well is if you are doing your boxes um, from Bunnings like I am, which is a timber and hardware store here in Australia, um, this symbol here is something that the post office typically doesn't like to see. Anything that might show chemicals or you know just bad signs like big, um, I don't even know what the other, what are some of the other signs? Red flags, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Poisonous or like aerosols yeah. or. Yeah, poisonous, aerosol. Like that one there says aerosol and that one's the yeah. symbol for it. So we always try and kind of black them out. Um, you'll see them, you'll, you'll notice very straight away that they're something you want to try and cover up. Um, but yeah, that's something else to be aware of. I just thought I'd touch on that before we go out and do some thrifting. All right, so this is our mission for today, guys. This is a bit of a look at what the next four weeks or three and a half weeks are looking like. So. I alluded to it in a previous video, but Courtney is off to Perth for 10 days. So she's gonna be away for the next one and a half weeks. Um, but today being, what is it, the 11th today, the Tuesday the 11th. So she does have a day there, and then she's got three days there. And what we're trying to do is list 15 uh, items up every single day. So list 15 items per day, 510 listings is gonna be the entire month. And then I need to purchase 225 items uh, to cover off the, the two weeks that I'm actually in America for, uh, from uh, August 6 to 20. So I want to have those items ready for Courtney to list up while I'm away, but I'm going to have to achieve that over the next three weeks. So you and I are going to go out and do some thrifting now to try and track down some of these 225 items. And in the meantime, Courtney has got her 15 listings a day right here with all of these DVDs that we picked up. And you're killing it. It doesn't look like I've ever moved. I know, it really doesn't look like, it really doesn't feel like we've been chewing it up, but we have. I mean, like most of these 15 a days from about here have actually come from this DVD lot. Yeah. The room was like kind of full through there as well and we've slowly been chipping away. So yeah, Courtney's gonna keep doing that and we're gonna go out and find another 225 listings. now in the presence of a all right i should let you guys in on the little mission that we've got for this afternoon the aim is to try and find 10 items that should be okay but i want to find an average sale price of 40 dollars big ticket items so 40 dollars plus and uh and 10 of them it shouldn't be that hard we're at the first store let's see how we go I had a bit of a peek in the DVD section and I came across this one here. It was Father Brown. This is the complete series as well. I saw that down there, four disc set, and that raised the eyelids. So I went and had a look on eBay and it was going for about $28. So I'm pretty happy to pay the $2 here in store. Had a look at another one of my favorite categories, the shoes. I found these, uh, these are actually a really nice pair of shoes just for the $3, but unfortunately given the soles, I had to leave those ones behind. Um, these ones I've gone ahead and picked up. Not a huge winner. We're only talking $30 to $35. But when you're buying it for $5, there's going to be profit in that one there as well. These were the best of the bunch though. These are the Asics Gel Menace 3s. They go for about $50. So not bad off uh, what was it? Just the $6. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you soon.
I am trying to be very conscious on this little trip, guys, to not buy too many DVDs because that's obviously what Courtney's got listing up back at home. And I kind of want to put a few different categories into eBay over the next four weeks and not just rely on the DVD category. Uh, so we'll be looking for shoes, video games, hats, action figures. These are some of the other uh, types of items that sell really well for me on a consistent basis. Um, so hopefully we can find a few of those on this little mission. Albeit, I did buy Father Brown. It was $2, but it turns into 28 I couldn't say no. So the first find here was this ACDC Live at the River Plate. Now I had a look on eBay and the comps were going for about $20. So for $2, I just went ahead and grabbed that one. The calculators actually go ahead and do pretty well. This HP 300S Plus Scientific was going for about $35 on eBay. Only international comps though, I ended up leaving it behind. Thought this was pretty cool. This was a North Melbourne, um, this is an AFL jacket, a windbreaker jacket, but for $30, no thank you. I put that one back on the shelf. Uh, would have bought it if it was about 10 to 15 dollars this one looked a pretty good book series to be honest with you the keys uh, of the kingdom i think it was but they were missing the tuesday edition otherwise it would have gone for 50. this one here as well i had to pick this one up this was a denver nuggets uh, jersey i thought this was in pretty good condition as well looked like it was fairly old hardwood classics i thought it may have potentially been genuine size medium for eight dollars i just had to go and pick that one up pretty cool find I don't know about you guys, but I just thought this was a pretty good purchase for $8. Allen Iverson, Denver Nuggets, they've just won the NBA championship. You'd think that would cause this thing to turn around pretty quickly. I'm not going to put it onto eBay. I'm actually going to put it on a Facebook marketplace. We're going to go $30 and try and make a $22 profit. I think given the fact that they have just won and Allen Iverson is obviously a Hall of Famer, um, that should move pretty fast. So not a bad find. Let me know if you would have picked it up yourself. Right, so there's three reasons why I ended up going ahead and buying these Adidas NMDs. The first one is the size. They're a US size 10, and that's one of the most popular and common shoe sizes that goes on to sell. So men's 10 was a big yes. The other one is obviously the condition. These shoes are in excellent condition. The soles had plenty of wear left in them, so I had to pick them up based on that. Uh, and then the third one as well is I've got a loyalty card and I was able to redeem another stamp. It gets me one step closer to getting a $20 free lot of uh, quantity. So. Uh, yeah, use your loyalty cards. It was also a slow day in the thrift as well. We've, we've gone fairly slow today, so I felt like I needed another, another purchase. So it has been tough. We've only got six items so far. I'd like to find another four. This one's gonna be number seven. We've got the ASICS Gel DS Trainers. These are a really good pair of shoes at a pretty fair price, $12. Plenty of wear left in them. I should be able to get about 50 for those. Should be able to get about 65 for these. These are the Adidas Ultra Boost, they're the Parleys. Really good pair of shoes in excellent condition. At men's size 10, just like the Adidas earlier in the video. A good size to be finding. Had a look at a few other items, ran around the entire store, tried to find two more to round out 10 li uh, listings for the day but unfortunately I could only come away with the two shoes. So there you go guys, unfortunately just the eight items were able to be found out in the thrift today. I'm really relying on the flea markets on a Sunday uh, and I'm also relying on private pick opportunities through Instagram and this YouTube audience. So um, it is what it is, can't do much about it. It is just a tough time out in the thrift. I want to give you guys a bit of an update as well around a very interesting poll. This one right here, I put it up on my Instagram yesterday and I really wanted to talk about it in this video today to get a bit of a conversation started uh, in the comments below. I was fascinated to see, this is around scheduled listings on eBay, scheduling out ahead of time. Uh, rather than just putting your listings live every day. 50% of you said that you'd never scheduled a listing ahead of time. You've just always put it live. And then the other 50% said that they'd put up some form of listing scheduling 20, 50, 100 uh, into the future. Now, I'm obviously going away, so we're really trying to schedule out to make sure that we've got a large volume of quantity that's already sort of going up ahead of time. So um, Courtney's working pretty hard on that with a few days that she's gonna be having off uh, coming up. And um, I'd, I'd really love to know in the comments below, for those that don't schedule their listings, is that done strategically because you've seen success even without listing every single day? Or are you listing literally every single day, seven days a week, and you just won't stop? Um, for me, it was just wanting to try and get my weekends off. So I tried to do all of my week's worth of listings between Monday and Friday. And then I'd schedule up 15 listings for Saturday, 15 listings for Sunday. So I wouldn't kind of look like I'd gone anywhere. At least that was my mentality anyway. But I don't know if I'm 100% right or not. I don't know if that's the best practice. That's why with a 50-50 scenario in the uh, poll, 
I wanted to get the conversation started in the comments below. So drop your thoughts in there. Appreciate you tuning into the video, guys. We've got a huge few weeks, as you're fully aware of now, uh, leading into this trip. So I'll keep bringing you as many videos as I possibly can. I look forward to bringing you the next one. This one right here is what I'll leave you with, though. A day in the life of an eBay seller. Pretty plain and simple, but it's what we do every single day. Go and check out that video. Appreciate you being here for this one. And subscribe to the channel. 20,000 subscribers. We're so close. We'll see you soon.